Uh, we'd week. like, to, week, like to welcome everybody to the First Prospects International Follow-Up All-Stars webinar. We have invited uh, sales associates from around the U.S. to follow some of their secrets and their experiences in following up uh, on, on digital internet leads. From both lead flow and event flow program, uh, programs, and for those of you who may not do business with us, there are two main programs that we that we uh, provide our clients with. One is lead flow, which is day to day leads, and the other one is uh, uh, event flow, which typically is in support of a, a weekend sale or sometimes a monthly promotion. And yes, Mike, we are we are recording this for later. If you get pulled away, never let it be said that we got in between a, a sales associate and a piano sale. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask my partner, Joey, to tell those of you who may not already know who we are, who we are. Who are we, Joey? Yes, I will. I will. And I just want to uh, let everybody know, if you do have questions, we are going to have a question and answer session. Um, if you ask a question during the presentation while we're interviewing, we may not be able to get back to you because we're kind of concentrating on the interview. So keep that in mind. If you can hold your questions till... Uh, till we have that question and answer session, that would be perfect because then you will get a turn for sure. Um, okay, so <clears throat> your hosts, this is us, Jack. This is me. This is you, uh, Jack Kleinfelter. He is the CEO of the company and uh, co-founder. My name is Joey Boza. I am the CTO of the company and co-founder. Jack and I started Prospects International Oh, about six years ago, maybe a little more at this point. Uh, but we've pretty much spent a lot, spent a lot of the last decade helping piano galleries sell more pianos by serving up uh, digital leads uh, to them. Um, our claim to fame and, and what I'm very proud of is, is we are fully owned and operated by piano industry professionals. Jack and I both have sold pianos on the sales floor. We come from that background, so we understand the industry and we understand the buyer. So, Jack, do you have anything else to add? No, just welcome everybody. And the, the next slide is, is one we're very proud of because whenever uh, all of you are entrepreneurial or, or work for an entre entrepreneurial type, I can say that, uh, and, and you realize that not always uh, do enterprises work out positively. But the reason why you may want to pay attention to some of the people who are going to be being interviewed here is because um, they, they have a lot of experience at turning online piano interest leads into piano sales. And uh, this particular graphic right here shows that we have 30 ongoing clients that represent 50 markets. Over the last three plus years, we have generated over 60,000 internet leads through the service of 75 programs. Most clients have more than one program going, uh, and then they also employ us for concert flow and event flow from time to time. And we are feeding leads right now, currently today, to over 150 sales associates uh, globally. So thank you all for being here. And I don't know what the next slide is unless I look at my cheat sheet, but I know it belongs to Joey. That's my slide next and uh i just want to add to this i'm so privileged to help all 150 sales associates sell more pianos because not only are we helping them and their families by generating more income but we're bringing music into more people's lives and that's why i'm in this business so i love seeing this slide and all that we've accomplished um so yes this is my slide the reason we're showing you this is because this kind of gives you a bird's eye view of the types of leads that the sales associates are going to be talking about. I mean, all-star sales associates. I should give them the correct title because they have definitely earned that. So the nature of piano leads by inquiry type. So what we have done, as, as Jack said before, we have uh, clients all over the US in, in a lot of different wonderful cities. And what we have done is taken some data from all of those cities combined. So this is kind of a collection of what's going on in the country. Now, we don't have a piano gallery in every state yet, but we'd love to. Um, but uh, everywhere that we do have one, which is a pretty good sampling of the major cities, that's where this data came from. Uh, and here's what we found when we did this last analysis, which was, which was not too long ago. 
so we found that 37.5% of the leads that we generate for our piano gallery sales associates are people looking for upright pianos. 26% of them reference that they're looking for a baby grant. 17.5% of them wanted a grand and 19% of them wanted a digital. So this is kind of the lay of the land of what the sales associates are going to be speaking to you about. And your market may be different because no market is created equal, but when you average them all together where we're currently working, these are the numbers that, that we got. Jack, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, just perception versus reality. I thought that in today's technologically advanced digital age that Maybe keyboards and digital would make up 40%. Uh, I thought it was extremely encouraging to find that 80% plus of the leads that were coming in were for acoustic pianos or what some people call real pianos. Absolutely. I, I hear from piano galleries that we just start to work with. They say, oh, you know, the, the piano interest has, has dried up. It's not like it used to be. I disagree. I think the piano interest, the acoustic piano interest hasn't dried up. The floor traffic may have dried up a little bit, but the interest is still there. And we see that online every day uh, in all the marketplaces that we work. <clears throat> So this next this next graph basically uh, is a depiction of the readiness of the leads, and and the upper right hand corner there says that some of them will never be ready. There are some people who need a life. They're online, and 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 they're worried about pianos today, and they're researching RVs the next day, and home stereo theaters the next day, and horses the next day, and they just they're never going to amount to a good lead. The 30% in the bottom right are those people that are in the market right now today will buy soon. And our definition of that is within 90 days. As we service our clients, I always ask people if this feels like what their market feels like. And I, I, I get validated over and over again. The most important part and the part that some of our interviewees are going to be helping us um, discuss today is the 45% that takes up most of the left-hand side of this graphic because those are the leads that need to be nurtured over time. Inside of that 45%, uh, as you will hear from our interviewees, uh, there, there, there are a lot of premium piano sales. And as we all know, sometimes those take a little bit more maturation, a little bit more of a gestation period. So, so the first graph was about the types of leads that came in. This graph is about the timing or when they're going to be ready to actually pull the trigger and be a purchaser. And then Joey, I'm going to let you take the next one, which is a conversion uh, graph that, that shows people the progression of what lead flow clients look like when they stick with the program. Sure. This is our last graph before we jump into our first <clears throat> interview, excuse me. And this is an important graph. We wanted to put this in here because we want you to understand the progression that these all-star sales associates have taken. So we kind of, not only are we able to see data from the leads that we generate, but uh, through our Piano Lead CRM, we're also able to see associate data. Uh, and this data pertains to how well the associates are doing in different marketplaces. And we want to know this. And the reason why we want to know this is because we can help our sales associates get better if we know what they're doing, how they're following up, and what their conversion rates are. So from getting a sampling of all the markets that we have, uh, we found that within the first three months of working with us, and that means we are delivering leads to you on a daily basis for follow-up, uh, you should be at about a 4.5% conversion rate. That's about average. So that means that for every uh, 100 leads that we send to you, you're going to be selling about four and a half of them at the beginning. And we call this the low-hanging fruit right here. And what low-hanging fruit means, these are users that have been looking for a while. They just needed the right offer, and they're ready to buy pretty soon. I'd say within the first uh, three to six months in that window, we would call that low hanging fruit and you're going to sell those at the very beginning. And that's what the, where these sales associates started. Hey, Joey. Yes, sir. I'm seeing something really strange on the screen there. What are you seeing? Transparency slider. Oh, 
Oh, I wonder how that happened. Are you editing while you present or? No, sir. Hang on. Let's see what's going on here. <laughs> you never know. Oh, this is pretty cool. I can write stuff to you guys. I didn't even know that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me turn that off. There's a feature we never even knew we had. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, hang on. Let me jump right back in here. That's pretty cool. I can like write notes to everybody. I had no idea. Okay, we're back. So let me continue. Sorry about that, guys. Are we good to go, Jack? Everything looks good? We're good to go. We look good. Okay. I, see, I see a black screen. It might take a second, Tony. Mm -hmm. to, it's got to go all the way to Nashville. There it goes. There we go. Okay, so the next the next bar here is six months. So after you're into the program a little bit, you're still going to have the low-hanging fruit that comes in every month. But in the first three months, you got some leads that are not quite ready to purchase yet. <coughs> Excuse me. But through effective lead nurturing, uh, you're able to sell those leads eventually as well. So the low-hanging fruit combines with the nurtured leads, and your conversion rate goes up. You sell more pianos and you start to get better. So, so on and so on, you'll notice that the nurtured leads here continues to go up, okay? Because it's kind of a snowball effect. Every month, you're still going to be getting a low-hanging fruit, right? That's about, that stays pretty standard in a marketplace. It goes up and down, but, but that's more constant. Whereas nurtured leads, they start to continue to build as the months go on and build up. So about 18 months down the road, a little more, some of our sales associates are at 15%. And that's a beautiful thing. And our goal is to help uh, those sales associates get there. So this is the final graph we wanted to show you. We wanted to show you those just so you can get a good setup as to what these sales associates are dealing with. There are some people in this webinar that maybe are not our clients, and we wanted to explain that. So if you are a client of ours, sorry if we bored you a little bit because you know this stuff, but that's the reason why. So uh, we're going to move on to our first uh, presenter here. And... Well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I skipped ahead once, Jack. Sorry. This is your slide, buddy. I jumped well, ahead. Well, we, we just we want you to know that the people that you will be listening to um, have excelled at at converting leads into sales. So we had the idea that we would designate them as all stars. So the first all star is Scott Burns. Now, Scott, are you in the webinar and and if Scott doesn't answer, Joey, will you just dial him up? I think I might have to. He's in the webinar, and I'm pressing the button to enable his microphone here, but he might have something going on with his computer or something. We'll try him one more time. Scott, are you available, sir? Doesn't look like it. Let's give him a call, and we'll interview him the old-fashioned telephone way. Okay. Can everybody hear that okay? Scott. Hi. Can everybody hear Scott? Jack, can you hear Hello? Scott? Yes. Okay, great, great. Hello? Hey, hey, Scott, how you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, I'm doing great. Is this Joey? Yes, it is. So I see that uh, hey, we had... Uh, how you doing, man? Good, good. I see you I maybe know, had man. some... I have been able to have my for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe you got an issue with your computer, Mike. That's no problem. But yeah. but uh, you're live now in front of everybody. We can all hear you. And uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and ask you some questions here. Uh, How's everybody doing? Uh, they all say Everybody's yes, they can well. hear you. And they look. everybody's saying, yep, we can hear you. We can hear you. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of loud, boisterous, and obnoxious most of the time. So. Hey, that's fine. I, I wish you could see this picture I found of you. I didn't know you were a musician here. I got a cool picture of you in this like dark lit club and there's like some uh, you know. some cool jazz lights on and you're singing soulful music. Cool jazz, yeah, a little jazz thing going on there. Yeah, one of our local jazz clubs here downtown South Bend. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I'm gonna jump right in uh here yeah, with you, Scott. Sure. Um, so a quick, Absolutely. Jack, you want to go ahead and read Scott's bio and then I'll go ahead and ask him the question since we had to call him. Uh, 
I can't hear Jack. Is my microphone on again now? It's on now, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know why it turns off. I didn't even touch anything. At any rate, it's sensitive. Scott sold over 145 pianos off of the lead flow program uh, the last couple of years. And the one thing that has been, uh, one thing that is noteworthy is that Steinway did award Shirks their uh, sales excellence award for a market their size. And Scott was a big part of that. The, the constant with, with, with Mr. Burns has always been his positive attitude. And, and I know that, that being a professional salesperson, you get rejection and you get all kinds of different attitudes. I think Joey, the first question we want to ask Scott is how does he stay so positive in the face of all this rejection? Because he must be able to bounce back fast if he can sell that many darn pianos. Sure, Scott, I know you weren't able to hear that because you were having a problem with your mic, but Jack just gave you a wonderful introduction and you'll be able to hear it when you watch the recording. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. Um, Most so, of it was true. <laughs> I'm not going to tell him that. So uh, here's the first question for you, buddy. Um, I can only imagine. It was a good thing. It's all good things. Um, so here's the first question for you. Sure. Um, yeah. And uh, once again, I want to personally thank you for doing this because we have a lot of associates that are going to learn a lot from somebody like you that has really just taken this program and ran. Well, it's my pleasure, honestly. It's, uh, you guys have been a true positive asset to our to our business. And uh, not only that, I think we've accumulated a great friendship. So it's, it's a win-win situation for sure. Absolutely. So the first question is, there is obviously a lot of work and rejection involved in chasing down leads. How do you deal with rejection and keep such a positive attitude? Because you're always a really happy, mellow type of guy. So how do you keep a servant-oriented attitude when you're faced with rejection from, you know, that 25% of the leads that are kind of just, just looking? You know, it, it, honestly, it's just, it, it's just an individual thing. I mean, you either... You either decide to, uh, just, you know, look at the cup. I, I hate to sound cliche, but look at the cup half full or half empty. You know, um, I just, I like to, and this is one of my things that I always say, I like to radiate a contagious positive attitude. So I like to, I try to live my life by that creed. And, um, you know, if, if, if there's so many leads coming in, you know, you might, you might, you know, a lot of, what, a thousand, over a thousand leads, you know, these are people that are genuine. They're they're they're, they're piano buyers. So we're not we're not we're ripping a piece of uh, you know uh, the pages out of the phone book and, and making cold calls to see if somebody wants to buy a piano. These people are coming to us and they want to buy a piano. So where where there might be somebody that's not quite ready, or we all get the we all get the group of people that are just kind of fooling around and tooling around. And, but but you know it's. I don't like to pre-qualify anybody. I don't take that for granted. I don't like to be presumptuous about anything like that. I look at as it as it that everybody is a buyer. Everybody that that's come to us and, and inquired with us is looking for a piano. And um, I, you know, I, I love people and I love music and I love helping people make music. And so the rejection to me is just a, a, it's a challenge. It fires me up. I love that. And I just wrote down what you said. I love that. Everybody is a buyer. I love that. A buyer. It doesn't mean Absolutely. that everybody's going to, you know, purchase something from you, but in the sense that everybody no. is a buyer, everybody that's coming through inquiring about a piano that if you look at them as a buyer, you treat them all with the same, with the same courtesy and the same plan that you would somebody that you know is going to buy. And I think that's going to, that, that adds a lot to why you're so successful. Well, thank you. I, I, for me, like I said, I just love to help people make music. So I, I like to take a, a true, genuine concern in their best interest. And, you know, and whether it means buying from me or whether it's, you know, they decide to go somewhere else, I, I sincerely say, hey, that's, that's great. The, the most important thing is they find what they're looking for. Um, I'll, I'll get, we all get the email back. Hey, we, we bought, um, you can take us off the list. Well, I each and every single time I congratulate them for that. Congratulations on finding what you need and two prospects and you sell one. So I, I kind of, I, 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 I've used that great Jack and I think that that was fantastic advice. Um, and you just got to stay persistent. Got to stay persistent. I, 
We've got some sound problems. Yeah, I love what you do, though. Yeah, I hope everybody knows what they do. Thing, That's great. Okay, hang on just one second here, Scott. Looks like... Uh, okay. Wonders of modern technology. Uh, let, let's keep rolling along here and get the last question in. Sure. Uh, so, Scott, I have one more question for you. Um, in, in, in past conversions... I've heard you reference. I'm sorry. In past conversations, I've heard you reference experimenting with the best times to follow up with phone calls and texts. Based Definitely upon your experience, sure. please share with us what you found. The first uh, return that they that our customer gets that's inquiring to come from me. So we've we told it. So I, I I hit them first, and then we'll set them up for you know three days later or two days later, however that may be. But the first thing I do is I come in, I answer everybody's, you know, everybody's uh, inquiry um, to try to to try to be able to qualify them some sort of a way just to reach out to them. You know, the, whatever the percentage that comes back, uh, comes back um, as far as return on the email. But then my, I have, in my experience is I wait till later in the day. So we're only open till six o'clock. Some of you guys are probably open a little bit later, maybe seven or eight o'clock. But uh, I like to wait till I hit it at five o'clock. Five o'clock hits, and then I call. That if whoever's whoever's provided a phone number for me, I, I call each and every one of them. I think there's probably a twenty percent success rate on reaching them. So um, I, that's my favorite thing is to get somebody on the phone because then they can really kind of sort of hear the sincerity in your voice. They're either going to say, you know what, please don't call me again, or they're going to they're really going to be uh, engaged in the conversation. So. Um, the, the, I, I think the best time is e emails in the morning and um, during the week, work week, uh, five o'clock and after, and then Saturday, we're open Saturday, close Sunday, Saturday, I'll call and email all day long, unless I've got a full store and I'm busy with, you know, ho you know hopefully busy selling pianos, you know, so, so. Um, that's, that's what's worked for me, um, persistence. Um, you know, I have this thing that sits in front of me that says the best things in life require a long-term investment. I, and I can also uh, apply that to everything that I do, not only in the workplace, but in life. But in a way, it works for me, you know. Well, thanks a lot, Scott, for your time today. And uh, we really all admire your attitude. So just keep it well, up, buddy. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure. I'm, I'm very humbled. Um, uh, I, I appreciate it. I, 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 would, I really look forward to hearing everybody's, um, what everybody has to say. And uh, I wish everybody the best of luck. God bless and happy selling, man. Okay, everyone. That was Scott Burns, regional manager from Mishawaka, Indiana. Thank you, sir. Thanks, man. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was a pretty good conversation with him. He's such a bright guy and such a great attitude. I mean, even when he talked about calling people after, uh, after they've even purchased from somebody else and congratulating them. I love that. Joey, let's check and see if, uh, if we're live and in working order, if you don't mind sending out a question to everybody in the chat feature, because it seems like uh, we were coming in and out for a little while. Sure, I just asked if everybody's back online. Looks like Steve is. Mike's back. Great. Good. So Jim's back. Wonderful. Working now. Yeah. Super. Sorry about the little hiccup, guys. You know, we're, it's difficult to get everybody together. We're all in different areas of the country. So, you know, we're going to do our best here. Uh, but, you know, technology sometimes, sometimes catches you unaware. But uh, I'm glad everybody's back. Looks like everybody can hear. And, and let's continue. Let's go to Steve. Okay, great. Let me jump over to Steve's slide here. I don't know if we'll be talking to Steve on the phone or not. Uh, do you have Steve in the uh, in the webinar? <clears throat> I don't have Steve, but I have everybody else, which is good. But what I can do is let me give Steve a quick call, and we'll chat with him. We're going to be calling Steve over in Jupiter, Florida. He's with Piano Distributors. Uh, he's a great guy. He's worked there, and he's worked up north as well. Uh, so he has really good piano experience in, in different areas of the country. Um, so let's give Steve a call here, see if we can get him on the line. I feel like Dr. Laura here. <laughs> Steve, Steve has, 
has the uh, distinction of of having done lead flow in two different markets, um, uh, both both St. Louis and Please down leave in your Georgia. message for. Ooh, we got a message. Let's try the store. Let's try the store. Go ahead, Jack. I'm sorry to interrupt. And he's he's also uh, worked event flow in a small town, Columbia, Missouri, and in St. Louis. So he has a different kind of a, an outlook having been that diversified with the, his experiences. Hi, is this Steve? Hey, Steve, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions in front of the group here? This is Joey Boza with Prospects International. Hi, you got a minute? Wonderful. Well, Steve, Steve's got a minute. I'm going to go ahead and put him on speakerphone here. Steve, welcome and thank you for participating. You're speaking to about 36 piano sales associates from around the country right now that are interested to hear uh, how you've been able to do so well in the markets that you've worked. So welcome. So much for everybody. Uh, so I have, so I'm going to quickly go through this. Uh, Steve is a store manager and sales associate for piano distributors in Jupiter, Florida. Steve is a longtime piano industry professional with a history of success in every market he has ever worked. Uh, which, which is why he is so well-traveled, uh, going wherever he has been needed the most, uh, and deservedly ended up in the Sunshine State. Go Florida. Uh, Steve has the distinction of working lead flow in two markets and event flow in two markets, and his initial success with our lead generation is a huge part of why we are blessed to have his company as a client. Uh, so, Steve, my first question for you is uh, would you please talk to us about the differences and similarities of the lead flow leads in Jupiter versus St. Louis? Understanding that the markets are different sized, but uh, what are you noticing the differences in the leads we generate in St. Louis versus where you are now in Jupiter? A little surprising, the customer that comes in the door, um, you know, seems much different leads we're getting. So, and what I mean by that is, get low-end leads, but I, I have had a pair of here, whereas in St. Louis, it seems much more, um, much more at a higher level. Um, but I think it's the fact that St. Louis is probably a younger market, more family-driven, more internet-savvy, and I feel that there's probably more mature um, adults just laughing, maybe not on the can you turn him up, Joey? No. But I don't want to try to reach them by the internet. Um, because I think, I think it's just yeah, a way of going at them, maybe. And it's just bringing in more of a certain type customer. Or okay. Steve, if you could speak just a little louder, that'd be wonderful, because we're having a little trouble hearing you. Okay. Okay. Um, so... I have one last question for you, and thank you there for, for explaining those two markets. Um, what works best for you to get dialogue going with prospects? This is an important question because this, this comes up a lot, and all sales associates have different protocols that they use, and I think we can all really learn from each other. Uh, but what, So what does work best for you to get dialogue going with prospects, and how might it be different for if you're working an event with our event flow program, or if you're working like uh, an ongoing lead flow program? Um, lead flow, I like to add pretty much the same thing of every everyone, and that is who's the piano for? At what level will it be used? Do you have a place for it in your home chosen? Uh, when do you expect to buy? And usually, I would say 50% of the time I get a reply of some sort, you know, and sometimes they just really open up about who the piano is for um, and, and at what level of play it's going to receive. They just, you know, I think a lot of people enjoy talking about their kids and their musicality and what they're looking for. How many questions does the, he ask at a time? Flow, it's much more, you know, it, it's like a sprint it's, or a marathon. It's, it's just all much quicker. So, the two sales, you know, we use that for, we're, we're store closing sales. So obviously that's a different kind of customer than I get every day um, at, in Jupiter or somewhere else. 
You know, and, and guys, this is this is really important what he touched on there. He talked about questions. And this is kind of a simple thing, but a lot of times we don't really sometimes we look it over. But when you are emailing somebody or texting somebody, your rate, uh, your return rate, the rate that somebody is going to answer you back, your response rate is much higher if you leave an open ended question at the end and not even a question in the middle of the email or text or at the beginning. Leave it at the very end so the last thing that that prospect reads is that question. And and what, what happens there is that's the last thing they read, the last thing they remember, so they take action right away and they answer it. And that increases the response. And once you can get that dialogue going, it gets a lot easier. Am I right, Steve? Oh, absolutely. And I try to stay away from price uh, entirely. You know. And Many times they'll just kind of bring it up to you. Um, but, you know, again, talk about more of the romance of buying a piano and the emotion of it. And you just try to get them uh, to be less sterile and more personable. And how many questions do you normally ask? Jack wanted to know. Do you, do you, do you leave it as one simple question when you respond, or do you sometimes ask a couple? I think I ask more than one. I ask who it is for. And at what level of play will it receive? Um, if it's, you know, if I have the feeling it's also about the look of the piano, I'll ask, you know, how do you how do you describe your perfect piano? Oh, I like that. But, and um, so, and I don't go much along, but beyond that, just maybe three questions, and all open ended. Um, oh, and then at the end, I like to say, you know, you know, uh, in answering those questions, that will help me send you appropriate information and photographs. Great, yeah, yeah. That that I love that about describe your perfect piano because you really get people to not to get all all mushy here, but they reach inside themselves and think about what that is, and that gives you great information because you can help ask questions regarding. Uh, how to get them what they what they actually want. Um, so, Steve, I want to thank you very much for taking the time with us today. Uh, I think we're helping a lot of folks here, and and that was some great uh, uh, great advice that you just gave. Um, so, we will be talking to you soon, and uh, I just want to leave it with a big thank you, buddy. You're welcome, Joy. Thank you. Sure. Bye bye. All right, hey. so that was that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I, let me address the first part of, uh, of, of, of what Steve was talking about when it was very inaudible, because I've, I've, I've talked to him about this recently, and it has to do with artificial intelligence, Be, because we ran that lead flow program up in St. Louis for quite some time, and it continued to do a better job of refining itself and bringing more intermediate and high-end pianos to it. He's in Jupiter, Florida. Anybody knows anything about Jupiter, Florida? This is where Tiger Woods lives. This is where the poor embattled football coach for the Patriots just got in trouble. I mean, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of stuff going on in Jupiter, right? So, so uh, sorry if John's in the room that I brought that up there, Cape Coral. But, um, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that is that the leads that are coming in early on don't have the benefit of the AI yet. And so he's getting what he calls bottom feeders in Jupiter, Florida. All of that is going to work itself out as you refine the targeting and the system gets to know where the bodies are buried and where the money is in Jupiter. So this is why I really liked it when he, when he used the analogy as a, a, a marathon versus a sprint, because Lead flow is a marathon and it will get better with time. So we better keep things moving. Is Ashley actually going to be in the meeting with us? I think so. And I, and I think, I think she is. Yeah, and, I'm here. Uh, yay. We got our first presenter that is live on the webinar. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Don't, don't talk yet, Ashley. I have to introduce you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So Ashley is the office and accounting manager for Fort Bend music centers in Houston, Texas. They have a family run business. Everybody in their family helps run the business. Probably cousins and nephews. I don't know, but everybody in it is, it's like the quintessential American enterprise 
uh, at Fort Bend Music down there. And, and, and Ashley is a very unlikely all-star because she's not even a professional sales associate. She's the accounting and officing, the office and accounting manager, uh, but she's been around sales enough that when they started doing events, uh, her father recruited her to coordinate the events. All of you have, many, many of you have had the phone and the appointment book, and you know that that's a huge responsibility. It's all consuming. So she's an all-star because her attendance rates have been fantastic. The last time we checked in piano leads, just from event flow, there were almost 70 pianos that have been sold in the last couple of events. So Ashley, here's your first question. Okay. What are some of the ways that you assure the events you coordinate have a high attendance rate and they're not just phantom appointments? Um, I mean, like you said, I'm not a salesperson. I don't try to claim to be. I think that's an advantage for me because I'm really the opportunity of the event and take myself the situation of you know, I can't answer the question, you know, when they bring a price or, you know, I just kind of play it. Oh, I was hired, you know, to help them run, you know, coordinate the event. Um, so I'm able to really, you know, just stress the details of the script that I have. And with, you know, not having the knowledge of being a professional salesperson, it's easy to, you know, I don't know how to answer that question. You know, if somebody's really insistent and you know, wants that information, you know, wants to talk to somebody, then I can get them in touch with somebody else who can, you know, better help what they're looking for. But, you know, I just try my best to really sell the opportunity of the event itself and, you know, build trust that they are coming and, you know, that, oh, this only had this doesn't happen. You know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You won't see these prices anywhere else, you know, just things like that. And it seems to work for the most part. So I think what I heard you just say is that you're selling the opportunity. You're not a piano salesperson. So mm -hmm. you're not trying to sell a piano. No, no, I'm just trying to sell them the opportunity of coming to the event. And then I leave that to our professional salespeople. Once they're there, you know, then they are the ones who sell the piano and I am able to take that all out of the, the initial, you know, I get them there, I sell the opportunity and then take myself out of the sales aspect of it. But, but why do so many of them show up there? Are, I've, I've heard a lot of people, uh, well, we've got 55 uh, appointments and 30 people showed up. Why, why, why do they show up when you book the appointment? She is pretty friendly. I guess good, just good luck. And I guess they really believe that I sold them a good opportunity to come. You know, that's, that's just what I have found. I don't, I don't give them anything other than, you know, to trust me that it would be a good event. You're never going to see, you know, this type of event again, you know, just really stress and at least do my best to get them there. And I guess I just have good luck half the time. How, how do you get them to confirm? To confirm. So we'll book the appointment initially when I get them on the phone and then I will confirm an appointment at least most of the time, at least two times after that. So I'll call them, you know, usually a week before the event and then I'll call them the day before their scheduled appointment and just make sure, you know, and we'll be there or, you know, so I just follow up about Two times now, if they, you know, are late to the appointment or miss their appointment slot, I will call them that day or send them a text message, you know, see, you know, hey, are you able to make it? Oh, I'm running late, you know, something like that. But uh, normally it's the day before. Uh, first, so the first follow of the event from their appointment and then call them the day before their scheduled appointment. So you never just set an appointment and 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 only make one more touch you typically talk to these people a couple of times in between the appointment mm -hmm. and the event yeah yeah at least two like i said at least two times after that initial 
they set the appointment and I'll talk to them at least two times after that, just for follow up and confirmation. And Well, one last question, Ashley, uh, the, the, how do you, how do you organize all of the leads that you get? Um, well, I, you know, I use the piano leads website as they come in, you know, usually the first thing I'll do is give them a phone call when their inquiry comes in. If I have to leave a message, I leave a message. I'll follow up with an email or a text message, you know, really just try to find out how they want to communicate. How they um, want what's to easiest communicate. for them. And like if they're not answering the phone call, but they'll email me back, then we'll continue conversation via email. If they like to do the text messaging, then I'll follow up and we'll just text. And I've booked a lot of appointments through text messaging. They rather text me than call. Um, so I just try my best to figure out how what's easiest and how they want to communicate and um, just go from there. And if they don't, you know, if the texting works best, then we'll just text, you know, multiple days, you know, a week before the event, the day before their event. Um, and I find out the text, you know, texting them works, email. I have a harder time getting people on the phone, but uh, but that's my first go to is a phone call, email, text message, all with like, you know, a day or two between each type and then just keep doing that until I get in touch with them. And do you use the the so you use the piano leads color coded CRM to, to yes. uh, organize them? Have, have you yep, done that be helpful? All the notes in there. Super. Well, Ashley, thank you so much. We appreciate your thank insight. You. And, 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 and we're taking down a couple of notes so that we can, we can reference them later on. Uh, I think Joey. Uh, Ashley, uh, please stay with us if you can, because we're going to have a Q&A session. We actually got a question for you already that I'm going to bring up in a couple of slides. But if you would mind, please, please hang around because uh, sure. we do have some questions from our audience from you for you. All righty. Okay, Jack, I think I'm going to let you take, and once again, Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jack, I'm going to let you take Mr. Tony Thomas because we had to kind of freestyle and I was on the phone with the ones you were supposed to take. So uh, <laughs> okay. I'll let you go ahead and, and take Tony. Tony, are you there? Is your microphone enabled, sir? Yes, it is. Wonderful. There he is. Well, Jack, I'll turn it over to you. Let me change the slide here. Uh, this is Mr. Tony Thomas from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not going to read the whole resume because it's just too doggone long. Uh, but uh, I first worked for Tony years ago when he was uh, general manager and sales manager of this little itty bitty company called Sherman Clay. Uh, I think they ended, I think they were maybe the largest piano company in the world at the time. Um, he also uh, had his own gallery in Rapid City, South Dakota. He operates Thomas Event Solutions, uh, which is a company who helps people have very successful weekend sales. And he's now the general manager, general sales manager for both the Nashville Steinway Piano Gallery and the Alabama uh, Piano Gallery in Birmingham. And I just hit the I just hit the highlights, Tony, because there's too much there, and we don't have enough time. <clears throat> Plus, you're not job interviewing. So, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Well, we're having fun. We knew that doing something live was going to be interesting, but I didn't know that it would be quite this interesting. You guys are both good looking too. I can see you too. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So are you. That's a that's a great suit you got in that picture I, I, I randomly picture. found on the Internet of you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I wanted to I, I wanted to ask a question um, <clears throat> that had to do with event flow. Uh, Tony has fielded more event flow and lead flow leads than anybody on the planet, because when we were first starting this company, we were pretty much about events. So this is kind of a repeat question, but for a different person who is a professional salesperson, how is it that you have found the most effective way to set event appointments? Well, that's an easy question because 
Ashley, who just spoke right in front of me, just gave you the best possible answer. I was going to ask if she had any relation to Rick Tackman. <laughs> yes. Very, very <laughs> yeah. close, bro. <laughs> very yeah, close. That, that, that says all there is, because Rick knows how to do this. Um, you know, the what she said is absolutely right. I mean, you're, the, you're only doing this with event flow. The only purpose is, is to schedule the appointment book the appointment that's the only reason and the only thing that you should be focused on is booking the appointment you can't sell a piano on the phone or you shouldn't try anyway prior to an event so my focus is i don't have my sales hat on as my salesman's hat on i have my if i could use her name i have my ashley hat on if you will and and that's the persona that i come across as when I get asked questions, I speak of the event, like if I'm at the Kennedy Center in DC or you name it, there's Strummerhorn here in Nashville. When I'm answering that phone, I'll speak of the dealer and what they're gonna have in the third person, if you will. Like I think they've got so many pianos out here, they've got this, they've got that. I'm not really all sure. What they have, I'm acting as if I'm not an employee that is actually going to be selling. I'm just You're the just guy. the coordinator. I'm just the coordinator. I'm just the guy that's booking the appointment. And when I come at them like that, um, what Ashley said again is correct. It kind of takes down their guard. When customers call you, their guard is up. You know, they're on, they're hypersensitive to anything and everything that you say. So. I live by four different creeds, and that's being impeccable with my word. I don't assume anything. I don't take anything personally, and I always do my best. And I've always found that no matter what I'm doing in life, if I follow those four creeds, I'm going to be okay. And when, you, when it's in sales, you don't assume anything and do not take it personally. Those are really important. You can't assume anything. You're only there to book the appointment. So let's change gears and let, allow me to ask you a question because we have a new CRM rebuild coming out. Right. And, and that, that, that CRM is going to be rebuilt and, and, and a part of it uh, we can attribute to a meeting between um, you and, and Joey. Uh, so, so uh, Joey, you should ask this question. You should ask Tony about how he follows up on some of the lead flow. Not not event flow this time, but the lead flow. Okay. Leads. I will. Um, <laughs> so, Tony, we were we were talking one day, and uh, you had you had called me. I called you. I don't remember why, but the conversation came up. You sold a very large ticket Steinway to somebody. Sure. And you were just mentioning it to me. You were just saying, hey, you know, I did this. It was from this. And, and thank you for providing the lead. It was great. And I said, Tony, you know, we have a lot of sales associates all over. I always ask this question when somebody tells me this. What was the process behind this? If you could tell them, tell me something that I can spread to the other sales associates, what would that be? And he said, well, the one thing that, that I could tell you is that I research every prospect for about half an hour, maybe an hour. Every time a new prospect comes in, I stalk them on the internet because knowledge is power during the sales process. And the more that I know about a particular buyer, the, the easier it is to sell, the easier they are to forge that relationship and eventually close. And I think you told me that that particular buyer was an author or something and you went as far as familiarizing yourself with yeah, it. Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're talking about the Steinway Spirio I sold off of the, the used lead program. Um, first of all, part of the process is you understanding why are they on the internet in the first place and why don't they just come walking into the store and ask questions. Um, in this case, the word used means less, less dollars spent. So if I buy into that, I'm leaving a lot of money on the table. So I got to thinking, I mean, these people are using the internet to um, use it for them. Let's, let's us use it for us so we can leverage it. So all I do is I go and I research social media, Google, and any other platforms that I can get my hands on to find out as much as I can about the person. In this case, this person uh, came across, she was an author, and 
I could see the books that she had written. I could see how long she had published. I could see basically her whole life story almost because it's on Facebook. And, and I find out that, you know, she's a person that appreciates the finer things in life. If you don't know and you don't ask, you never will know. And so, again, when it comes to lead flow, my only thing with her, well, number one, was getting her on the phone, making the contact. And once I did that, then I have to create this picture of we've got everything, anything and everything in the store that she could possibly want. When can you come in and take a look? And my only goal there was to get her in the store. Once she came into the store, I immediately employed top-down selling and started with the Spirio. And we never went past that. We just never went past it. I knew that she had the money to do it. She wasn't interested in a used piano. She thought she was. That's the only reason why she engaged. But when she finally came into the store and she got exposed to a high-end Spirio Grand, um, then that was it. Thank you very much for that. That's great. That's great information. And uh, the the... The reason why we have a flagship lead generation method that deals with used pianos is because our research shows, and I'm sure everybody in this room who sells pianos understands this fact, is that the majority of users, they start off with that used word because they're protecting their wallet and they don't know very much about pianos and it's a safe thing to do. Well, let's look at some used ones first, right? That doesn't mean that the user is not qualified to purchase a new one. It doesn't mean that the user would not love or is best suited for a new one. It just means that psychologically that's where we start. So that's why we put so much focus on that used piano method. And I'm glad that you were able to sell a brand new wonderful Spirio from that method because those are amazing instruments. Yeah, I, th I think what I'm going to take away from this is, is that Tony re realized that they thought they wanted used and used is 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 just the carrot mr thomas thank you so much we'd like to fire some questions from our other sales associates if you don't mind Tony, no, are you still there we need yeah. to okay yeah. cool okay great well i'm probably just gonna see if he'll answer so we can chat with him very quickly he's our last interviewee and then we're going to go to our question and answer session Two, six, four, seven. Let's see if we can get Rick on the phone here. And I'm going to ask him where he's going. Wait, hey, wait. Rick, how you doing? Well, piano industry professionals, and they'd love to hear what you have to say. So we're going to jump in and uh, start asking you some questions, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. 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 You can't get you on the speaker here so I can talk successful retail operation. Unlike our relationships with Scott, Steve, Ashley, and Tony, we have a very short working relationship with Rick and Worldwide Piano. We've only been working with them uh, for a little while. Um, Thank you. Uh, uh, so um, here's the first question for you, Rick. Yeah. What, what factors do you attribute your rapid acclimation and progressively climbing conversion rate to? Yeah. Um Wonderful. Um, yeah. 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 There's all there's it's in some and many of our sales associates have this uh, uh, already connected. Um, but uh, what MailChimp does and, and how we set it up is we set up some automated engagements. And these are very simple emails, just like we discussed before, um, just like Steve uh, was discussing earlier. Uh, it, it, it leaves the customer with a burning question about what type of piano uh, that we can serve them with. and uh, 
Rick's been having a lot of success getting responses and taking those simple responses and turning them into relationships and appointments. So that is a great thing. Yeah. Um, one other thing. Sure. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, one, one other thing that I find very critical is that getting back to the customer right away, an email or a text or whatever, once you see them bounce to you, I found if you reply quickly, you know, they get amazed if you reply to them at 11 o'clock at night or whatever. Um, and that's what I've been doing. And when I do that, that's when the conversation continues. Um, I've also found that videos and pictures are the key um, because if you just, if I just sent them a list and said, I have this piano, you know, these pianos would probably fit your needs, no pictures, I, I don't get much of a response. If I send them videos of me playing the pianos, I always get a response. So, so that tends to be something very important um, as you guys have talked about and how I'm the, you know, the guinea pig for videos online. Um, I, I think it's, it's a great way to go. I love your videos. When we first started working with you, I went and I was looking at your website just because I acclimate very well with all the clients through everything that they've done online up to the point they start working with us. And you've got a whole bunch of great, uh, great videos online that, that are just really vibrant and it really, they really tell a great story and it sells your personality and it sells the fact that people want to buy from a guy like yourself. So they're very warm and uh, I, I, I congratulate you for those because they're very effective. Yeah, and, and even just you have a quick video, it doesn't have to be professional. You know, I, I put it on a music stand, I put it next to the piano and I play it for them. Um, and, and it's just, you know, I get people walking the door, oh, you're the guy I saw, you know, it's like your TV celebrity kind of thing and they feel like they know you. So, you, you know, they walk in the door, they're already your friend. And that's, as we all know, the key to selling anything, right? their friend right they don't want to buy um, they don't want to buy from a salesperson that's the last thing they want to do they don't want to buy something they want you to be the concierge that's what i feel like doing this i'm their concierge i'm there to help them i'm not selling you anything i try not to have any type of selling type of buy or use any words like sell or buy how can i help you find the right piano to meet your needs that kind of talk you know absolutely um Final question for you, sir. At, at times, uh, we have sales associates connected to that, s that selling premium pianos is difficult to do with the inventory list method. Um, uh, how do you make the premium piano sale you have recently achieved and what engagement advice can you share? Because, uh, you know, some users are telling you that, you know, I don't want to spend too much. How, what techniques do you use to pair them with a piano that's suitable for them and not what they think they should have? How do you pair them up with what what is best for them? Um, really ask the right questions, get the right answers, right? Um, yeah, when I, when I reach out to them, I don't, in my head, try to pin them. Like you said, oh, they're looking for a used piano. I mean, a used Steinway is still $50,000, $65,000, right? So, you know, just because they're looking used, I, I don't lock in on that. This one gentleman that, that, that inquired back in December, he was a long, a long haul for me. I mean, I've only been doing this for, for less than three months, but um, he was one of my first leads. You know, I got him into the store. He came in, we met, and uh, he had some of family emergencies and he couldn't continue to, to meet with me. But I had a warehouse full of used Steinways and I wanted to set up an appointment to drive him there. So after the holidays, I followed up with him. How's your family? You know, what's going on? You know, we had problems. And really was just talking to him about his family and whatnot. Um, and then I, fi I finally got to, to meet back up a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, we found a nice Hamburg Steinway app for him, 1997. And just went down like that. It was, it was, I hate to say, not, not that hard. <laughs> as long as I kept in contact with him, and I was his friend, not a salesperson. Well, Rick, thank you so much for addressing the group today and sharing your uh, experiences uh, with our program and, and selling pianos over there in Edison. Um, we wish you a great, great day. And thank you so much again for sharing that with us. Thank, thank you so much, Jack and Joey. Um, it's been great. And I look forward to a lot more sales with you guys. Likewise, sir. We'll be speaking to you soon. Well, Joey, for, for, for the sake of, of not running too long, I think we should probably um, 
summarize what, what's our next slide look like here sure well quickly and i'll go quick on this yeah here's here's our our summaries jack if you want to i know you took some notes i took some great notes so just let me know when you're ready for mine i'm, I'm i took few but mine are very uh i'm very excited about what i what i got yeah if anybody wants to take notes um uh the, the what what we gleaned from our first interviewee scott was um uh, the statement everybody is a buyer and his cliche, the glass is half full. Um, genuine concern. You can tell in his personality that he's got a lot of, a lot of uh, positive attitudes. And uh, the, 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 the protocol that struck me that everybody might want to experiment with is that he does his emails and his texts in the mornings, and he waits until people are off work near the end of the day between five o'clock and six o'clock to try to get more people on the phone. And he has more luck there. Anything else on Scott from you? He's the guy with the great attitude. And yeah. we have an article that's titled attitude is everything and everything that pretty much describes Scott. Yeah, it does. Now, now Steve in, in, in Jupiter, um, he uses three questions and they're always open-ended and that goes along with our advice to everybody to read the Thomas Freeze book, The Secrets of Question-Based Selling, one of my very favorite books. Um, he, he, all, he also, he called a lead flow a marathon because of the things that have to be nurtured and, and, and Tony and Ashley, they referred to it also. In an event situation, it's more of a sprint. There's urgency involved. And, and and I know you took this note down, Joey, that statement that he said about, could you describe the perfect piano for you? I thought that was a great, that was a great, but back before I was in the piano industry, I used to co-call on people and I would ask them to paint a picture of me of their perfect customer when I was selling advertisement. So asking somebody to paint a picture of their perfect of the perfect piano for them i think is a great question to ask anything else on steve from you joey no sir um i think i think the thing that struck me most about ashley was how she did separate herself purposely from the sales staff i'm just the event coordinator um yes yes i love that i i, I and, and then i thought it was really funny how a guy who really is a sales trainer and a salesperson, Tony uses that same thing, even though he is a salesman. He says, "Oh no, man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just coordinating the event." Uh, well, the customer is less threatened, aren't they? Because yeah. Because they don't feel like they're dealing with somebody that's going to try to push them into anything. I'm, I'm just. It's all about the appointment. How many of you are guilty at selling the piano over the phone? Me. <clears throat> when I first started in in Nashville selling pianos, I was so excited to get an up. I just wanted to sell a piano and show my boss that, look, I can do this too, uh, even though I was hired to be there just for a web guy. And the first thing I did is, oh, we have we have this so-and-so, you know, we have this this Yamaha upright, it's this, and oh, you gotta come see it, you gotta buy this piano, it's this it's this price range, everything. But when you step back and you relax and you, and you don't try to sell the piano over the phone, you sell the appointment and the experience of coming into the gallery, that's where you can make real success happened. So I agree 100% with, with what she says. And, and also, last thing I wrote down that's pretty important here, she says, I don't really give them much of anything. Ashley, I disagree. You know what I think you give them? I think you give them a kind, friendly, trusting personality over the phone. Somebody they feel like they can trust and they want to come in and meet. So you're giving them a lot over the phone. And I think it's those things. The other two takeaways before we leave Ashley and, and, and go on uh, to the next all-star is that there were multiple touches in between the appointment, the, the, the first attempt to set the appointment and when the appointment actually happened. It, it wasn't, okay, you set the appointment and then the day before the event or the day of the event, make sure they're coming. There were multiple attempts there and she always communicates with people the way that they dictate they want to be communicated with. Now, with Tony, it, it's hard to boil it down because he said so much good stuff. But the thing that he said that I didn't hear anybody else say, but I know it happens all the time, 
time is that when he gets somebody in, he still believes in top down selling. And in this world of Internet, where a lot of people are just plastering prices all over the place, I think it's important to realize that with premium pianos, top down selling still counts. Uh, when our new CRM comes out, the reason why you are coding or coded lead enrichment was because Tony stalks people before he calls on them. <laughs> and I think that's important too. And I can't remember his creed. So any of y'all that, 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 that want to call Tony up or email him, you can ask him what the four things were, but he's got a creed. Maybe, maybe he'll repeat it again when we get into the Q and a, the final, uh, anything else out of Tony? That's it. That, that was great. And then, and then Rick uh, repeated some really good fundamentals, timely responses, customize the MailChimp. He, he, sales is a creative process. So even if we give you an automated thing that seems to be working in a lot of places, customizing things and finding out what works best in your market for you is really important. Timely responses. He has more luck getting a relationship to form if it doesn't sit around for a couple of days. And he's a busy guy. So that's impressive that he gets to him that rapidly. And then, and then something we all know and something that also will be in the future at Prospects International, if you're a client, our lists will uh, engage more with YouTube videos and, 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 and things of that nature. But, but, but videos and pictures and things, it's the old Zig Ziglar thing. People buy on an emotion, they back it up with logic. So get them excited. So I think unless you have anything else, Joey, those are the takeaways and we can just open it up for those who could stay online. We had some people that had problems staying connected that aren't with us anymore. But for those of you who are connected, uh, if you have a question for any of the all stars, uh, the three that are in the room are Tony, Ashley. It's just Tony and Ashley, right? That's correct. OK, so you have a choice of four, Joey, Jack, Tony and Ashley. So if you if you want to if you want to uh, go ahead and fire away on the on the chat feature. And I think oh, Rick we, is here. Uh, Rick, Rick is here, here as well. Rick's here. Thanks, okay. Rick. So, so um, I think we already had one for Ashley. Joe, yes, yes. While you guys are coming up with your questions, very quickly, for those of you who are with us for the first time, maybe you've never worked with us, uh, I wanted to give you a, a, a way to reach out in case you did, uh, in case you're interested in any of our services. Um, we have a great quiz that we've put together. It's a simple uh, uh, amount of questions, uh, simple questions. And uh, it's going to ask you a little bit about your marketplace. And uh, the objective is the quiz is to kind of find out where your digital marketing strategy is at. Uh, and what this is going to do is uh, we're going to give you a complimentary marketplace analysis. So we're going to let you know how many uh, people are interested in a piano in your marketplace online. Uh, so that's going to be very nice. You'll, you'll get to see where the online piano interest numbers look like in your neck of the woods, how they look. So if you'd like to go ahead and take that quick quiz, it is quiz.prospectsint.com. If we haven't worked with you before, we'd love to hear from you, and uh, we'd love to see about what we can do in your marketplace um, in the future. So let's move on to the wonderful Q&A session. So we have three out of five all-stars and three out of five ain't bad. So I'm going to back up here because there were some questions earlier. Uh, here we go. So uh, this question was for Ashley when she was on, uh, uh, when she was conducting her interview. We got this question for her. Uh, that's from Rick. Is there follow up on the day of the sale? Are you still calling on this on the day or do you stop on the day of the sale and just focus on the event? No, I mean, if, if there's still leads coming in and then I'll call them and try to get them in there wherever we have openings. As for the ones who have already booked appointments, if they are late or don't show up, I'll call them on the day of the event. But no, I'm pretty much calling people up until, you know, the event's over. If the leads are still coming in, I'm still responding and trying to get them, get in touch with them. So you keep calling until the final hour, huh? Pretty much. <laughs> Okay. Then, then let me ask you a personal question in front of everybody, Ashley. Um, 
So when the event is over, do you like collapse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I usually get a day off after. <laughs> Cause it's, it's all hands on deck, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Fantastic. Great. Well, thank you for that answer. Um, our next question here, I'm going to give to Mr. Tony Thomas. This is from Lee Krause, and he is a sales associate over in the wonderful city of Kansas. Uh, and his question is, Tony, what do you do with the people who don't get back to you uh, on the second try? If you've called them twice and they don't get back to you, what's your, what's your protocol? When do you, when do you give up? And, and does your follow-up change based upon if somebody doesn't answer one, two, three, three times. Well, how does the method change when following up? Well, first of all, going back to last week, um, Brandon doesn't give me a day off after. <laughs> she's, she's pretty darn lucky that Rick does that. Um, I don't get a day off. Anyway, um, what do I do? I send the police out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, you go into each one of these things knowing on average it takes seven to ten tries. And with what your first presenter said, he emphasized persistence. I mean, it's a lot of persistence. Uh, Robert, who works for us, took him 20 times one time to close a grand sale just to get a hold of the people. So the moral is the story is you just don't give up and you keep being persistent until somebody tells me, listen, if you call me one more time, I'm going to shoot you. I get it. OK, I understand. Have a great day. Appreciate it. But I'm never going to stop trying until they finally say, OK, I'm not interested. And the reason why is because these people took the time to go online, reached out to us. Would you do that? Would you stop following up with the customer if they walked into your store? If somebody physically walked into your store, would you and you never they walked out, they didn't buy. Would you stop following up with them? No, you would continue to follow up with them because you developed a relationship with them. And it may have been a five minute relationship. It may have been a two hour relationship, but you would still follow up. So what I do is I treat every digital lead as if they were a customer that walked into the store. They have given me permission to contact them just by the sheer fact of giving me their name and telephone number. So I'm I don't give up after two tries. I don't give up after 10 tries. I just keep trying different times of the day, weekends, evenings, you name it, text, email, or phone until I get a hold of them. And when I get a hold of them, most times it's, it's, a, good, it's a good situation. Most times they will say, thank you. I'm so sorry. I've gotten your messages. I've just been out of town. Or they'll give me a multitude of reasons. But very rarely do they ever get upset with me. Thank you. So it's it's D, all of the above. All of the above, yeah. D, all of the above. And uh, one one thing, one one last parting uh, statement for me as far as I don't see any more questions. And this has gone on about an hour and twenty minutes, and, and, and a lot of people are busy. Thank you for being here this long. Um, I I I do want to emphasize the fact that post sale, we have had a lot of people tell us. Whenever, whenever somebody will call in and, and, a, and a sales associate will say, well, you know, nobody ever answers their phone and they never return a phone call, which, which, also makes, uh, which also makes you think that maybe I'm making these phone calls for no reason. The difference is after they have purchased, they have said, you know what, I know I didn't return the phone call. But you sounded like an anti-idiot. You didn't sound like a push. You sounded very friendly. That's why I felt safe to return a text or an email. So in this day of caller ID, just because somebody doesn't call you back doesn't mean that uh, you didn't make your first impression and make sure it's a good one. That's all I've got for today. Joey, do you have anything else? I do not have anything else. Um, I want to thank everybody for getting together today. Uh, this is a big deal, and I know it's tough to get everybody 
together, all in working galleries right now. There's people coming in and out, uh, but the ideas are so wonderful and it helps us all get better as an entire industry, get better as salespeople. So one big thank you to everybody. We are going to do this again. We're going to keep getting better and better at this and we're going to keep connecting everybody. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. And I'm going to, and we have uh, Jack, go ahead. I have uh, this last quote from you here. If you'd like to read, we wanted to put this in. This is our slogan. Quality leads are the blood which courses through the body of a healthy sales organization. And then most importantly, what you guys should not forget <laughs> is the all stars have left the building. Thank you very much, everyone. We will see you all again soon. Bye bye Thanks. now.